Okay, so you can see how you've got this transparency happening and it's quite deep in these panel lines so that's natural. So this, this is helping you get a smooth finish. The tap water itself is acting like a retarder meaning it's going to slow down the drying time so you allow the paint to naturally level meaning you'll get less brush strokes. Hello, this is BJ from Hearns and welcome to another episode of Ask Hearns and I'm going to be showing you how to make a wet palette for using acrylic paints. So, let's get into it. Uh, I guess, let's build the, um, the wet palette first. So I'll show you what I use. You need a lunchbox, which can be also a takeaway container because all you want is a lid and cover like this because what you're going to do is the lid is actually going to be your palette so we're going to be painting on this section and that's going to be the cover okay so from there you need some kitchen paper so a kitchen towel regular type of stuff so just one one square of that will be enough put that over there and then you're going to need some baking paper so you your standard baking paper that you put cookies on and stuff so it doesn't get um, um, stuck to your tray. Now I'm just going to slice that up so it's going to sit in my uh, little lid there for the palette. So just get some scissors and trim it up. So just do this. A section there, easily fits in there, and then cut the end off it. Okay, like that. Okay, so I've got that, that, and that. There's this one, and then I've got some plain water. So I've got a cup of plain water here from the tap, which I'll use to moisten this towel. Okay, so first thing I do is we'll make this towel fit within here. Now you don't want it on the edges because on the edges you're going to use this as a cover and you want it to be able to seal it up properly. So let's do this, fold it lengthways and then fold it along here short so it fits in here. So that fits there really well, that's perfect. So as you can see that fits around the, the surrounds of the uh, cover there. Now we're going to wet this so we want to moisten it to a point where it's not dripping full of water but it's got to be wet enough so that it keeps the kitchen paper moist. So I'll show you a little trick here. I'm just going to pour this on. Now if you get a little brush and you hold it along the edge, this is one of the old chemistry tricks I learned years ago, you hold it on this angle like this and as you pour it with the uh, water tension it will just flow along that actually wasn't so good. But that's the idea anyway. Alright, so we've got water in here. Let me just get rid of this. Alright, so it's moist. And then this goes, kitchen paper goes on top. So it just lays on top like so. So what you want the kitchen paper to do, this is just meant to sit flat on your um, kitchen towel. So the kitchen towel is holding most of the moisture and it's just giving a little bit of humidity up to the, um, uh, the baking paper so that this is the surface we're going to put putting all our paints. Okay, so you'll see a little bit of moisture coming through here and the top will feel a little bit wet. That's what you want. Now the idea of a wet palette is with acrylic paints they tend to dry very very quickly so if you put those onto a dry palette they'll dry to a point where it's going to start feeling crusty as you're brushing onto your surface at least with this it will keep it diluted 
um, and it will be always smooth to use. Okay, so I've got our, our palette there, and we're ready to put on some paint. So over here I've got some uh, artist type uh, acrylics. So that's a Joe Sonia type. We've got um, uh, a scale 75 type, uh, the Vallejo, and here's a scale 75 fantasy type. So the, these are similar types of base. They're a pure gouache artist style, uh, mainly water. And then we'll also be using these Tamiya paints here. So these acrylics are an alcohol base. So they work a little bit different, but they're fully interchangeable. So these generally tend to be very difficult to brush paint because they dry quicker than the artist style ones. And by using a wet palette and mixing a touch of water in them, it makes them much more uh, usable. Okay, so let's load up our palette. So we'll put little drops at particular points. Okay, so do that. It's a bit of white. Bit of green. Bit of Vallejo. This is the model color. Bit of blue. Okay. Scale 75. This one doesn't want to come out. Let's just do that. Okay. Alright, so do a bit of this. This is a metallic of the Tamiya range. A brush. So, this off. just get a bit of kitchen paper to work with as well. So I'll keep a bit of kitchen paper here to wipe off the brushes. See. So these are more solid color. Now these particular paints tend to work better when you stir them rather than shake them because the pigments tend to sit on the bottom a lot. Let's do this. And in between I'm just washing off the brushes in in the water that I've got over here. It's just regular tap water. Okay, and I'll do some of this transparent orange. Alrighty, so I've got a piece here. This is actually a gun off a, a Gundam kit, and I've already brush painted it with some primer. Now the idea of the primer is that the primer gives it a bit of a tooth for the paint to sit on. So when I say tooth, it's going to be a rough surface. So I've left this side regular, so you can see it's a bit of a shiny finish original, and that's uh, with the primer. So this was a lacquer primer. This is actually Surface of 1000 by GSI, which I've just uh, mixed up the bottle and just brushed it straight on. And I'll try both sides so you can see what the difference is going to be like compared to a non-prime surface to a prime surface. Alright, so let's just move these paints out of the way a bit. Alright, so we've got our palette here. Let's so give this a quick wipe. Being a bit messy here. 
All right. Okay, so most of these coals are going to be quite thick to brush with at the moment. So what you have to do is, as you look at it, as it's coming out as a brush, you can see how it's quite thick. Now what you do here is you just get a bit of water and you mix it down, like so. So you see how the consistency is already changing? Like so. Now you can play around with the consistency. So this side is the, the thinnest part and this side is still the, the raw, really thick finish. Okay, so you always do a little bit like this. Now for some brush. I can only do the same with green. Right. So you see how dense this one is, so it's still in acrylic paint. You see how it thins up like that. We'll keep going. So Vallejo. And I'll just do the red and we'll start painting a little bit and see how we go. Okay, so we've got our piece here and we'll just dip it in. We still got a bit of red there. So you see how it's it's blending now? So if you're doing white, it's important to have your brush really clean before you continue. So that gives an idea. So let's just clean this off. Okay, so we've got some white here. I'll just brush it across here. So you see how it's coming on really, really smoothly. And it's sort of like a wash because you can see it filling in all those panel lines first. So what's going to be important with this technique is once it's on, it's going to need a few coats to cover properly. But if you're blending colors, I mean, this is fine because you see this is already lightened the, the gray that was underneath. But if it needs to be pure white, then you'll need probably two more coats at least. Okay, so we'll leave it like that. So you see it. Now th these are a matte finish. So when you see it's still glossy, it means it's still wet. So we'll give that a bit of time. So we'll use the next color. And I'll just paint this green. And we'll paint over here. Okay, so you can see how you got this transparency happening and it's quite deep in these panel lines, so that's natural. So this, this is helping you get a smooth finish. The tap water itself is acting like a retarder, meaning it's going to slow down the drying time. So you allow the paint to naturally level, meaning you'll get less brush strokes. So you can see the white there is just starting to, to lose its shine. So that's starting to dry up now. And then what we can do is we can do a mid-tone. So to do a mid-tone, so we'll get a bit of white. Yeah. Get a bit of green. Yeah. Mix them together. Like that. And you've got a mid-tone. Now that still looks a bit thick there. You can see how it's creating some ridges when you brush it around. Touch water. So that's probably a touch more. Alright, let's just wipe off the excess so it doesn't drip everywhere. So you've got a bit more control. 
take a little bit of paint on the tip like that and then you can do your paint a mid-tone in here Okay, so it's looking pretty good. Now before we go over these, we just wait until they're dry and we can put on extra coats. So you see the beauty of the wet palette already. So when you need to do your extra coats, all your, all your mixes are already here. So you can go to either one and then continue on. Now just say we want to do a really fine blend. So just say we want it to transition from this green all the way to this white. We can do your, your subtones as well. So we do touch here and a touch of this. A little bit of water. Just wipe off. And we'll do our Okay, so you got you get this feathered look. So you see how it's sort of blended in and it's sort of because the, the that green is still a little bit wet, we can blend it really well. So you see that? And then we'll do it again. We'll just dive it in here. This one here. And we'll do it across this point. Okay, and these are real basic. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to go over those again reinforce the colors so I'm give it a little white so you see I've just started on the edge and it's already building up that white And because white's um, quite a light tone, it's always going to take a few more coats to cover a darker tone. So you see the grey is always still going to show through. But with the green, because it's a darker tone than the grey, it's going to cover it very easily. So if I do this. Okay, so it gives you a very quick analysis of how you use your wet palette and how you use your, your acrylic painting. Now we'll wait until that dries, so while that's drying, I'll just spin it around, and so this is the non-prime um, side. So if I try to do the same thing, so I do this, so as I'm painting, you will notice that as my paint brush goes across, that paint is pulling back. So, because that's, that's the water tension and it's not sticking very well to the smooth surface. I mean, if you want to do brush painting like this, it can still be achieved. It just means that your first coat is going to be patchy and you're going to use more paint. So that's where primer really helps by giving that really nice um, tooth for the, the paint to stick to. So as you see there, I sort of brushed it around. It's reached all the areas, but it's a pretty thin coat. Okay, so let's see here how it's looking. Okay, so we'll give a bit more time for it to dry. So I'll pop it here. Alright. Alright, so I'll show you how you can mix between these colours. So these artist type colours are on this side. Okay, so you've got your Joe Sonyas here, you get your Scale 75. Um, artist 
uh, acrylic. You've got uh, Vallejo here, and you've got Scale 75 game there. So we've got our alcohol type ones, which are Tamiya. Now, just say I want to make a, um, a, a titanium whitey looking silver. So, touch of white. Yeah, bit of your silver. And there you go. Now, presto, you got you got a silvery white. Okay, and pop it over here. So you got the really gentle metallic from the silver, and it's blended with that that white tone. And so you can see that the alcohol-based ones mix perfectly well and brush very easily with other type of artist colors. So you can blend any of these colors you like. So if you want a little like pink tone. That's the smallest amount of red. So you got this little heat stained metallic look here. It's got a slight pink to it. And that's how you get your subtle variations of color. Because once we do this, you can see it's just the slightest amount of red tone. All right, so what can we do with transparent colors? Same sort of thing. All right, so this one's starting to dry up a bit because the, the alcohol base do dry up pretty quick. All right, but we can slowly just reactivate it here because it's not totally cured as yet. And that's the wet palette that's helping us keep it usable for longer. So there you go, you got this like that. This will touch of silver. Okay, so it's still transparent. It's got a touch of metallic in it. And let's see, where's a dry area? Let's try doing it here. Okay, and just highlighted that edge, like so. Now these still need quite a few coats on them before they get the depth of colour. But uh, just as a demonstration, I think it works quite well. Just to see how these all work. And then we've got this is a, a greeny grey by Tamir. So like so. Just put this bit there. Like so. Okay, we'll let that dry a little bit and I'll talk about your wet palette. So here's your palette that you're working on your model and it's probably going to have colors that you'll be using for a few days. Just so you can't finish in one session, usually with acrylics, you have to throw away your, um, uh, your palette because it's all dry. Or, all you have to do is you get the base of your container, put it on top, press it down, seal it up, and this will keep the humidity in there. And most of these will still be usable for up to a week. Now the acrylic uh, Tamiya ones may dry out quicker because of the alcohol is evaporating from them. But if you keep them a little bit wetter, then they will last a couple of days. So you could park that aside. Okay, you're going to work the next day, come back home. Your palette, what you do is you lift it all off, like so, and there you go, it's ready to go again. So, let's see how we go on here. All right, so it's still a bit wet, so let's try a bit more of this, put a bit more density here. I'll blend it through here. It's 
so mid time the lighter green tone finishing up with white Like that. So it doesn't look all that smooth now, but as you work with it, you'll be able to get all those blending a lot softer. So this is the part that takes a bit of time to do the blending. And this is generally how you do a lot of flesh tones too, because you want them nice and soft. So mix these down really, really wet too, which helps them act like a wash, the blend. Like that. Just press here. Like so. And then later you can do your detail type painting. So you can do an edge like this. It's basically just using the, the edge on the side of the brush just to highlight the corner. And just see there. Use a finer brush. This. Let's see. Let's put a line down here. So that's the basic way of using a, a paint palette for your acrylics. It's definitely a game changer. It really helps with getting really smooth finishes for uh, brush painting. I mean, not everyone can um, have an airbrush. You may not have the space, or perhaps your budget doesn't allow for it. So doing large areas like this, uh, very simple. You just need a broad brush, stuff like this, or even something a bit broader. Uh, if you're doing... Uh, Camouflaging, same sort of way, you can blend it to make softer edges uh, and tank, say, 33 scale like this or even an aircraft this big you can reasonably brush paint it, the uh, majority of it and then to finally smooth it all off, you just put a, a coat of spray can flat clear over it and that'll soften all the, the brush marks but I mean the brush marks are going to be minimal anyway and when you look at a raw aircraft, they can be quite rough so it's a good look so that's my quick tutorial on how to use uh, uh, acrylics with a paint palette and how to make yourself a paint palette. So there you go. So there you, I'll put the lid back on and I'll stay fresh for a bit and then I can continue on. So there's my tutorial and if you have any questions, just leave them in the comments below and I'll get them answered for you. So thanks for watching. Oh, 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 oh,